Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to cover the brand new Autel Evo product that was announced last week at CES in Las Vegas. Now, before I left for the show, I had about five companies that I was determined to meet with when I was out there, and Autel was on that list, primarily because of the Rexstar Premium product, which has been a very popular drone for them, and I know a lot of you guys fly it. I also got a lot of questions from you through this channel asking me, is the Xstar Premium going to be upgraded? Is there a new model coming? Go talk to them and see what's going on. Also, there was kind of a mysterious video released last year that showed that airframe, or at least an Xstar-like airframe, lifting off and having the legs pull up, and then having the camera spin 360 degrees to give it a full 360 degree view. Now they never released that product, but they talked an awful lot about guess what's coming. So I thought, let me go there and see if it's actually done. Maybe they got a prototype in the booth. So when I walked into that booth and everything's orange in the booth, there was the Evo. And it completely shocked me because nobody had talked about it before the show. They kept a real good tight wrap on any kind of leaks around that product. But it just caught me by surprise because changing an airframe from a standard like XStar Premium airframe to something small and foldable like that is a Herculean engineering effort. It isn't something you do in a couple of months. So the fact that they were able to engineer that quickly, get it out in the market, was pretty impressive. Now, at first glance, it looks a lot like a Mavic. And I know a lot of the YouTube clips out there are calling it a Mavic killer. I don't necessarily think it's a Mavic killer, but it is a Mavic competitor. So it's going to be interesting to see how those two products move along, because in some ways it's extremely similar to the Mavic. In other ways, it might be a little bit ahead of the Mavic, especially some of the other models I'm going to tell you about at the end of the clip. So let me talk about some of the basic specs before we get going. So if I put it side by side with the Mavic, again, I don't have this product yet. I did argue a little bit with them about sending me one early so I could get it in the shop and tear it apart and do some comparisons. So maybe my pleading will pay off. We'll have to see. But if I sit them side by side, my impressions were that the, the Evo product would sit a little higher than the Mavic. So it is a little taller, but the footprint other than that looks almost exactly the same as the Mavic as far as length and width, but the height is a little bit higher. The legs have a, a very solid engineering feel to them. When you snap them out, there's a nice click at the end, a very satisfying click to let you know that they're in place. It doesn't have any exposed wiring. It's got a standard 4K 60 frames per second camera, which is a step up from the Mavic. That's a 30 frames per second camera on the Mavic. It's got the same amount of flight time, about 30 minutes of flight time, which again, if I'm looking at the Mavic Pro Platinum, I'm going to compare it to that, about the same flight time, about the same distance, about seven kilometers or 4.3 miles. Um, I haven't he heard it fly. They weren't flying it in the booth, but I'll have to take their word for it that it's a quiet drone to fly. But that seems to be, you know, the, the state of the art nowadays where they're trying to make drones quieter and quieter as they fly. The other thing that was interesting about it, and this is a, a checkbox in the Pro side for the Evo product over the Mavic, is the controller itself had a small, I think it was a 3.3 inch OLED display, which showed you all the telemetry and point of view stuff that you would see through the drone. Now what's nice about that is you could still use your phone with it, so, or a tablet if you had a larger tablet, but not having your phone with you meant you could absolutely fly this with the remote controller. So that's a pretty cool thing, because a lot of times you'll go out in the field and you'll bring your phone along as an afterthought to fly with it and realize, geez, I don't have a lot of power in my phone, so maybe it's going to limit my flying time that day. Having a little OLED in the, in the uh, controller guarantees that I can put that quad up and fly it around and not have to worry about is my phone charged when I take it out. So those are some of the basics. Now, while we were there, uh, I spent an awful lot of time looking this thing over and taking a lot of pictures and asking a lot of technical questions. The engineer in me kicked into gear and I'm like, man, I got a million questions for you. What about this? What about that? So I'm going to spend some time at the end explaining some of the features that I think are different than the Mavic that may make it a very interesting quad. And I couldn't get a lot of answers in some of the technical stuff I asked. Hopefully I'll get some responses over email because I took a bunch of emails down. But I did score an interview with them. I'll run that now, and then you can see how they respond to those questions. And I'll come back at the end and give you some of my conclusions, because I really feel like a lot of people are looking at this as an alternative to the Mavic. And again, I think people are being a little bit uh, over-exaggerated about it being a Mavic killer. I don't think it is a Mavic killer, but I think it is a product that would you know, probably you know, deserve some consideration if you're looking at the Mavic. I'm still a huge fan of the Mavic. The other thing is this isn't out yet, so we'll have to see when it hits the street and what the price is of it. They kind of hinted it would be around $1,000 for the basic model, but let me run the interview and then I'll come back and give you some conclusions when I compare the two to each other. Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again with in the Autel booth with uh, our good friend Andrew St. Pierre. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. So we're here to talk about your new product. You've got an Evo product, which just announced today at uh, CES. Is that correct? Yes. So this is our first uh, compactable drone. Very small, but packed full of features. So it's got a very compact design. You can put it in that camera bag that you already have. Right. Um, and it just fun folds right here. It's got a 4K 60 frame per second camera on here. 
So we're getting that nice crisp image as well right. um, with a three axis stabilized gimbal. So you get that stabilized footage that you're used to from the drones already. Okay. Um, it's got uh, vision systems on the front, so computer vision systems that are able to uh, detect objects and then plan paths around those objects as well. So okay. it doesn't just stop, it looks and can move and maneuver and around. With the dual cameras, you've got scaroscopic, I guess, in the front. Yeah, like okay. the bi binocular vision. Okay, so. okay. excellent. And then the camera in this is a micro two-thirds sensor? Yes, micro two-thirds. It's a Sony XMR R sensor. Um, and we're getting that 4K 60 frames per second off okay. of that camera. Great. Right and uh, your flight time on this is? Uh, we're, we're getting about 30 minutes of flight time in ideal condition. Okay. You always have those reserves in there for the fail safe. So you're probably getting around that 25 minute mark um, with those fail safes in there to make it come back home to you when it gets Okay, low. excellent. Well, your products are uh, incredibly popular on our channel. A lot of people fly them, a lot of people love them. And they said, Rick, don't leave the show without going past the hotel booth. I'm completely surprised at this product. I expect it, uh, I know this is a prosumer product. I expected a larger drone like some of the other ones you released, but this is a really nice welcome surprise. Now, we're going to break something here. This hasn't actually been announced yet, but there are two other models right here behind me on the shelf that I can't get any closer to. But this has got a micro two thirds sensor in it for the camera. This has got a full one inch sensor. And then this model over here has a 360 degree camera on it as well. Wow, that's fantastic. Now, this is called the Evo product. And these will be made, probably named something else when they're released. And these are prototypes that are going to be released very, down the yeah, road. Very, very much prototypes. We wanted to get the engagement from the community, see what they're looking for. Um, we heard them last year, and they wanted a folding drone. And that's kind of what we went for this year. Excellent. Very nice. Now, you mentioned the remote controller, too. That's a really unique feature on the remote. Yeah, definitely. So again, compact design, so it folds down. It does have a device holder that will hold up to a 6-inch tablet on here nice. or a mobile phone. Um, and the big thing here is it's, it's got a 3.3 inch OLED screen on here. Wow, that's so fantastic. We're getting, we're getting critical telemetry information here. But if you forget your phone at home, right. you can see your video still. Sorry. No, you're okay. That's all right. um, another great feature too with this is you can still access your camera features. So you're not out setting the camera up properly. You can adjust it up here with the wheel as well. I've oh, got gotcha. you. That's a big plus because a lot of times when you go out to fly for the day, you bring your phone along, maybe you're using it as you're getting out to the location, you start flying and all of a sudden realize, man, I got 15% battery life left. Yeah. Day's over at that point. So exactly. having that old LED built into there is really a plus. That's fantastic. Great. Well, these look like a wonderful product, um, and the release date on these are TBD at this point. Yes. You're thinking so, a couple months out, we'll see where we we'll are out in the street, we'll or what see, do you think? So we're, we're making a couple minor modifications to make. Right? Sorry. No, you're okay. Okay. and mix in that battery out a little bit longer. So we'll see that down the road when they come out. Okay, great. Very good. Well, I'm impressed. I really think they're cool. I'm going to have to get my hands on one of these to test it for the channel. So Absolutely. if you turn your back, I may, I may grab the one with the one-inch <laughs> sensor on it. But all right, so that's it for today. Thanks hey, very thanks much for your so time. Much. I appreciate it. We'll see you. Hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about what this Evo is about. And I have to say, he was a lot of fun to interview because he was really open to answer any question I threw at him. And that's pretty unusual, especially for a company releasing a new product. Companies tend to be very guarded about the information. And if you ask him a question on camera, sometimes they'll say, I can't answer that. Or maybe they'll even tell me before we go on camera, don't ask me about that. Don't talk about price or release dates. These guys were totally open to talk about it. And I must have talked to four or five different people in the booth. I probably spent an hour in that booth talking about the engineering behind it, asking a lot of technical questions about some of the artificial intelligence built into it. They were totally open to talk about it. Now, it isn't released yet, but they're saying the release date's a couple months away. Pricing-wise, this initial model will be about a thousand bucks. They've got two other models coming, which I got a picture of, but I couldn't actually get a close look at. The second one's going to have a full one-inch sensor. So the initial model is going to come out with a micro four-third sensor. Again, very comparable to a Mavic product or a quad in that space. The one inch sensor puts it in the class of like a phantom, right? So a one inch sensor on a quad that small, that's groundbreaking. The third model is going to come out with a 360 degree camera. So you're going to be able to do sort of the VR stuff that you're used to where you can get a 360 view of things and then decide what you're looking at. Now those two models are going to follow after the launch of the initial Evo. But I have to thank that whole entire Autel team because they were just so gracious and so open. They were really excited about the product. And one thing I respect about the way they presented that product was a lot of companies feel the need to compare what they've released with somebody else's product and then bash that product and say how much better their product is than the one that's already in the market. It would have been really easy for any of them to say, 
this is a Mavic killer or compare it to the Mavic or some other folding drone. And they didn't. They took the high road and were just really excited about the product they were releasing. And I couldn't shut them up talking about it. They were just so excited about the product. So I respect that an awful lot. All right, so what makes this quad so special? There are a couple of things in the quad which you're starting to see on other quads in this class or this price range that really are separating the dumb quads from the smart quads. And those have to do with the way they track objects, the way they avoid objects, and also how they position. Because GPS and GLONASS is good, but there are other technologies out there that'll help them fix their position in a 3D space extremely accurately. Now this quad has three important features in it, which you'll see in other quads. Some of these I'm gonna talk about are available in the DJI products as well today, but it's kind of cool that they're in there and they were willing to talk about all of these technologies. So the first one I'll talk about is a technology called visual inertial odometry. Now it's a mouthful. What that means in essence is on the bottom of the quad, there are two cameras. Now you can do it with one, but it's not as accurate. They have two cameras facing down and those cameras are snapping pictures of the ground as this thing flies along. So as fast as it's flying, it'll snap pictures underneath. It looks at those pictures and there's an algorithm running inside the uh, quad itself on one of the core processors that's comparing all those pictures together. It's actually picking out distinguishing things in the images it's gathering to know that it's moving along. Now it's used for a couple of different things. It actually uses it for finding a safe path out, finding a safe path home. It also uses it for, for very accurately fixing its position when it can see those objects below it. So it's a very advanced feature set and that requires software, artificial intelligence software or algorithms that run to analyze those photos. So you have to have two things to make this work. You have to have really good sensors, in this case optical sensors, and you have to have really good algorithms running and fast processors to manage all that data that's being analyzed. That's built into the quad. So right away that means it's got a great positioning underneath and it also improves its obstacle avoidance because it can see things below it to sort of avoid running into a tree or a pole. Another thing it's got, which is brand new, is dense stereo perception which unlike just having two cameras in the front that has a stereoscopic view of things, this can actually look at a picture in front of it or an object in front of it and get almost a 3D map out of it. Now again, other quads have had that, the Mavic's got it, the Phantoms have it, but really what it comes down to is how good is your software, how good is your algorithm for processing the data you're getting back. And that's where the race is gonna be. The foot race going forward isn't gonna be flight time because they all kind of got that down. It's gonna be all stable flight. They do a real good job of locking it sort of to a 3, 3D position in space through GPS and GLONASS. These algorithms and the software being developed that actually determine what that object is and how to avoid it is really where the foot race is gonna be between these quads. So these guys spent a lot of time on the algorithm behind that, that dense stereo perception. And I spent some time talking about it. It's pretty cool stuff, and I think these guys are really, really on top of it. So it'll be interesting to me when I compare this to any other quad. For me, it's not gonna be about flight time, battery life, all that stuff. They're all gonna get that figured out because a lot of that stuff's off the shelf. It's gonna be about how smart is that quad to avoid the tree I'm approaching. More importantly, how smart is that quad in an emergency situation that it can come home? And not just see something and stop, but in this case, in the Evo, to see something and navigate a path around it to continue home. So that's really impressive that they can do that. The last thing, and this is something that initially a lot of quads suffer from, they're getting a lot smarter with it now. It's a thing called occlusion handling. And what that means is, if you're tracking me and I duck behind a tree, the quad lost me, doesn't know where I am. If I pop back out from behind the tree, is it gonna pick me up again and continue to track me? So occlusion handling has to do with how much of a different image or a disappearing image can it deal with and how long will it wait for the image to come back? So in this case, they've got a video up on their website. It shows a car driving under sort of a tree-lined street. They've got an incredibly smart algorithm for occlusion handling, which means it could lose the car. As long as it's got a small portion of the car that it can still see and keep in its memory, it'll look for that pattern when that thing emerges on the other end of those trees. So all those things together make this an incredibly smart quad. And again, other manufacturers have it. It's not like this is brand new or groundbreaking. It's just how smart are they? How good is the algorithm behind the sensors or the analysis it's doing on those pictures? We'll have to wait and see. And again, I, I pleaded with these guys. I actually took one off the shelf and tried to get out of the booth. They tackled me on the way out, so I had to give it back. But I'm hoping to get one of these Evos early so I can do a full review of it and do some comparisons with other quads in the market because I know a lot of you are interested in small, portable, folding quads. Now, having said that, I don't think DJI is going to sit still. I mean, the Mavic's been out for a while. Mavic Platinum came out. I wouldn't be surprised if something comes from DJI very soon to sort of answer this, but we'll have to see what happens. I know their engineers always are working on new things and they've always got massive improvements in their technology. I expect other drone companies are gonna come out with folding drones, but for now, this is causing a lot of buzz in the industry because from my perspective, 
it's really the first competitor to the Mavic on the market space today at a price point that makes it really interesting. So if I put them side by side, they're very similar in a lot of ways. They've got about the same flight time, about the same distance, they've got the same camera systems in it. But wait a minute, the Evo has got a 60 frames per second camera. So if you're a photographer, that's, that's a move up, right? What else do they have that's similar? Well, they both have remote controllers. Wait a minute, the Evo has got an OLED display in the controller. I don't need my phone. Now it's nice to have the phone, but I don't need it. So that's kind of cool. The Evo is a little faster, not a lot faster, but a little faster. So if you're a speed demon, that may be something to consider. How about price? Well, it's about the same price if you're comparing to a Mavic as the Mavic Pro. Not the Platinum, but the Mavic Pro. So if it comes out at $999, which is what they're teasing, you can get pretty much a Mavic Pro Platinum for the same price you're going to pay for a Mavic Pro. So again, all of this is pre-release. None of us know if it's going to come to fruition, but I wouldn't bet against these guys. Autel has done a great job of putting quads out that are reliable. Their customer service is good. They stand behind their products. For the most part, I haven't gotten a lot of complaints from you guys about them. So I can't wait to get my hands on this product and actually put it up in the sky and fly this thing. And again, you know how much I love the DJI products. So I'm sorry, I'll tell I have to say that because I'm really a fan of their products, but I'm, an, I'm a, an equal contributor for all the products that are out there. I fly a ton of other drones as well. And it'll be fun to put this thing up against, you know, the Mavic product and other products that are out in the market space today to do a fair comparison. But that's pretty much my take on it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the clip. If you have any questions, at all. I've got some more information I couldn't fit in the clip from specifications perspective. Just ask me the questions you need and I'll answer them when I can in the comments below. Um, I love putting these clips together as I say every time so hopefully you find this helpful. I know a lot of people covered the show and a lot of people talked about Autel but I hope you got a little bit more detail about the underlying technology behind what that Evo can provide. So thanks again for watching. Until next time, happy flying.